Hey, what's up? This is Sam, and welcome along to the Introducing StackView video tutorial series. Apple has provided new ways of creating layouts within iOS pretty continuously over the last few years, and 2015 is no different. iOS 9 includes a new UI view subclass called UI Stack View that will dramatically simplify the implementation of many common layouts. It comes with full support in Interface Builder, and once you adopt it, you're going to find implementing your layouts significantly easier. In this video series, you're going to get your hands dirty with the new UI Stack View, learning all about this new, powerful layout class along the way. This introductory video serves to give you some context around the evolution of layout on iOS, the need for Stack View, and a summary of the video tutorial series as a whole. Many moons ago, pre-iOS 6, layout was all performed using springs and struts. This was an incredibly simple layout engine, and it worked pretty well for the range of devices available at the time. There were so few screen sizes, it was basically possible to create pixel-perfect designs. WWDC 2012 introduced iOS 6, and with it, a new layout engine, Auto Layout. This made layout a much more declarative process, specifying relationships between views rather than exact sizing and positioning. Auto layout was very much a nod towards the future, since it could cope with different screen sizes relatively well. 2014 saw the introduction of adaptive layout, a layer that sits on top of auto layout and allows for universal layout. That is to say layouts that adapt to different screen sizes. So far, these new features have been required. If you want to support many device sizes, you really need to implement some form of adaptive, and hence auto, layout. Although 2015 also introduced a new layout feature in the form of UI Stack View, it's not required, but rather an abstraction of an often used layout to massively simplify the process of translating your designs into actual app layouts. What does a Stack View actually do? Often you might have had a layout that includes a set of subviews in some kind of line. For example, the red views in the diagram behind me are subviews of the grey outer view. It's perfectly possible to create a view like this using auto layout. In fact, you can see the arrows indicating the kind of constraints that you'd need to create. However, there are a lot of constraints and they're relatively brittle. Adding a new view to the middle can be exceptionally complex. Enter UI Stack View. This UI View subclass provides a way of laying out subviews in exactly this manner, but removing the necessity for you to create all of the internal layout constraints. The yellow box in the right hand side diagram shows what the Stack View represents. Notice the corresponding reduction in the number of arrows, i.e., layout constraints. This is very much just the tip of the iceberg. As you work through this video series, you'll see how much easier it is to create nearly all of your layouts through composition of stack views. The app that you're going to work on in this series is called Stack Review. It's an app that allows you to look up the ratings, locations and details of pancake houses. You can see in the video behind me what the app will look like once you've completed the series. The starter project that you'll download later doesn't look that much like this at all. You've got a lot of work to do. The data layer has been fully fleshed out, leaving just the UI for you to complete. The next video will involve you creating your first stack view inside a table view cell of all places, traditionally one of the most complicated areas of an app to get the layout correct. Once you've got your head around how interface builder handles stack views, you'll move on to unleashing the full potential of stack views through nesting them. Stack views are very configurable. Something that traditionally would have involved you fiddling with layout constraints. You'll learn about what you can do, including how stack view interacts with the adaptive layout system. Animating stack views is super easy. You'll build some really cool effects using code and techniques that you already know. Finally, you'll get your head around how stack views manifest themselves in code. 
Interface Builder has great support for stack views built in, but there are times when you'll just need to dig into some code. That's it for this video, and as ever, I love to leave you with a challenge. Unfortunately, I haven't actually told you enough yet to set you any homework. So you're going to have to jump straight on to the next video, in which you'll build your first stack view. Don't worry, there's definitely a challenge at the end of that one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.